So in today's video, we're talking about Devin Townsend. He's from Canada, and the album is called Lightwork. Album was released on November 4th, 2022 through Inside Out Music. This is album number 29 in his discography. I'm counting all of the different bands he's been in. So Devin Townsend has had a long career. He made his first appearance on a Steve Vai album in the 90s, and then he had a band called Strapping Young Lad. That was an extreme uh, thrash metal band, and He's had various solo projects under his name, the Devin Townsend Project, Devin Townsend Band, and you know, a few others. He's a legend in the world of extreme metal. He's a very versatile vocalist, and his vocal abilities are always like the center of his work. After my first listen, I was kind of surprised. It was not what I was expecting, but it's not to say I did not like the album. It's just very different. The word to use for his albums is big and epic. He uh, likes to use layers of audio tracks and that creates a very big sound. And such is the case with his two albums like Snuggles and Puzzles that came out last year. They were a pair of twin ambient albums and now he has this new album called Lightwork. It's more like traditional songs but these songs have so many different like layers. Uh, you need to listen to them like deeply and preferably with headphones to be able to absorb everything that's going on. It takes you on an immersive like space ride as you listen to this. It's the kind of album that requires multiple listens. It grows on you each time. The album has 10 songs. It's actually another double album and there's like another 10 songs called Night Work and I would have to do like a complete other like a review because there's like so much going on and just talking about 10 songs is just going like, to take me like this entire video. When so, you first turn on the album, you're not going to hear blast beats or heavy death metal riffs. Uh, you're going to get like an electronic beat and some like falsetto style singing. You might be wondering what this is, but you know, stay with it. it, it the more you listen to this stuff, uh, the more you hear uh, the stuff going on behind the scenes. Like I said, he likes to use layers of sound, so if you listen closely... You hear some really cool stuff underneath all this seemingly like kind of like an electro pop song. As I said before, vocals are the key. He can take his vocals to these unimaginable heights. It's progressive music, so there will be lots of twists and turns, and this music is melodic. You get to the second song, Lightworker, and you're probably wondering what you will get, and this is a song for fans of 70s prog has some folk melodies that you might find on like a classic Genesis album, but you also get these big bombastic vocals. I think his voice is the thing that makes his album heavy. The song is also kind of happy in its tone. Uh, Devin likes to have these like little voices in the background. They add to the mystery behind the music. It's the kind of music that makes you feel like you're in like an amphitheater, but with like these big booming sounds and vocals. The songs are big and there's like a lot of stuff going on. On the third track, you get taken on this magical space ride with lots of layers of sound. It's a song with a very big sound, but also kind of ambient in nature. Devin sings a smooth uh, crooning style over a wall of electronic and future futuristic sounds. Devin's a master of bringing everything together. There's a whirlwind of sound and he adds in some guitar riffs that... Um, would actually like sound good if played in a death metal song, but they are buried in the mix and they make it seem not unnatural, if that makes any sense. I also noticed some nice drum work on the album. So for example, a song called The Void has a throwback to some like post-punk bands of the 80s. Uh, this song brings you in with some beautiful melodies and memorable choruses that have this layer of heaviness that's buried underneath all these like goth style melodies. I think when Devin lets out his screams, he's letting you know this is still a heavy album, even though on the surface it appears to be something different. By the middle of the album, there's a song called Heartbreaker, which is probably the most dense and the proggiest song. It's a song that has so many different layers and twists and turns. It's a progressive rock or metal or whatever you want to call it, but you get drawn into the different layers of sound, including complex guitar riffs, weird tempo and time signature changes, and lots of different vocal styles from the melodic to the high falsetto singing. 
All this time you've taken on a space ride of sonic proportions. You can imagine a choir of aliens singing. It's what you get on this album. There's also a theatrical quality to this album. Many songs you can imagine like an elaborate stage show going on. There's a song called Dimensions and that's what makes you feel like you are, like sonically. It makes you feel like you're being transported into another dimension with futuristic almost a techno beat and some very spacey sounds. Um, Devin gives you some distorted vocals, kind of like in the style of like Al Jorgensen of Ministry, but the song has so many different layers than you would hear on like a typical Ministry song. The song makes you feel like you're in some sort of like rave in like the middle of space. As the album moves into its second half, there's still many more layers of progressive rock and these sonic soundscapes and some very complex and dense layers of vocals and sounds. Take, for example, the song Celestial Signals, another space ride, and you can just listen to it and get completely immersed into it. There are also like some soft ambient textures that come in and out of the songs. Now, moving forward, imagine the band Radiohead, but with this large choir of alien beings singing. Um, that's how I describe the song Heavy Burden. Uh, that's coming towards the end of the album. You're brought into these different layers of sound. A song called Heavy Burden also just needs some heavy guitar, and you get a little of that, but it is layered underneath all the different uh, sound and ambient textures. There's a song called Vacation. It's track number nine. It reminds me of a song by the Eagles. It's kind of like country rock, but it's memorable. It's melodic, but Devin does it in his own special way, so he makes it seem different, but it doesn't feel out of place. The final song, Children of God, it's a 10-minute epic. It brings us immersive sonic soundscape to a close it's like this final song and it's like big theatrical production Devin lets out some big epic screams on the song but as always they're layered underneath all of these sound textures so in the end it's an album that gets better with every listen it's not something that you're going to get into upon first listen but it's the kind of album you have to listen to like while doing like absolutely nothing it's not like an album for working out or for driving. It's just for like doing nothing. And that's my opinion, at least. Um, production is great. It's Devin Townsend. There's a reason this album was delayed so many times. And you know, he wanted to like get it perfect. And, you know, he almost did. He pretty, you know, it's a really great album. I think if you're a fan of 70s progressive rock, you would like this. And if you're a fan of Devin's earlier works, he does not disappoint. And... Definitely listening to this album a few times. It just gets better with every listen. My score is going to be an 8.5 out of 10 just because this album is one that you need to listen to a good like 20 or 30 times uh, just to enjoy it. It's 8.5 for now. I mean, maybe it will uh, go up. I know it's towards the end of the year. But anyway, that is all. Thanks for watching. I'll be back uh, with some more uh, album reviews and uh, see you in the next one.